Hey folks! Hi Kat! My name is Lillian and you're watching This Is A Thing. Now, if you have political leanings that are sort of like mine, then you're probably pretty disheartened by the amount of red that ended up in the U.S. after the midterm election on Tuesday. But, in any case, thank you Kat for making a video. I hope some of you got some good information from it, and I hope a lot of you were out at the polls. Saturday is Intersex Remembrance Day. When I used to teach safe zone trainings, we would ask everybody, how many of you know what intersex means? And maybe a couple people in the room would raise their hands. And then we would say, okay, how many of you have heard the word hermaphrodite? And very rarely did anyone not raise their hand. I want to make something very clear. The term hermaphrodite refers to an individual who is half male, half female, and can reproduce within themselves. Which means that there is no such thing as a human hermaphrodite. Calling somebody a hermaphrodite is not only incorrect, it's actually very insulting because you're basically telling them that they're a mythological creature and not real. Clearly, they're real. These are human beings with bodies and feelings and lives. The proper term to use is intersex. But then again, a lot of people who fall within the intersex community don't identify themselves as intersex, but rather as a person with a disorder of sex development. There are a lot of different types of DSDs, including different genital makeups, hormonal differences, chromosomal differences, and internal reproductive organ differences as well. Because of the level of variation, the number of people born intersex isn't entirely clear, but the estimate is around 1 in 100. Now, 1% of the population might not sound like a lot of people, but if we talk about just Los Angeles County alone, we're talking about 60,000 people, at least, that are intersex or born with a disorder of sex development. If we talk about the entire population of the world, we're talking about nearly 80 million human beings. 80 million people! I think understanding how many people are intersex makes it a lot easier for people to understand and want to learn about. This is a large portion of the population, and it's important to respect these people, their bodies, and their lives. Unfortunately, a large percentage of people who are born as identified intersex, which most likely means that they have ambiguous genitalia, have surgery performed on them as infants. Approximately 10% of the intersex population has surgery performed on their genitals. Now, before the early 90s, I think it was 1994, doctors didn't have to tell parents before performing quote-unquote corrective surgery on their newborn child. This means that if the child was born with what looked like ambiguous genitalia, the doctor would perform surgery to make everything match up or look more normal. After the early 1990s, parents had to be informed, but that doesn't mean that doctors gave them an unbiased argument. Doctors would come in and say, there's something wrong with your child, I'm going to fix it. And the parents said, okay, because what parent's gonna say, oh no, don't fix my kid, I want something to be wrong with them. Unless the parent is very clearly knowledgeable about these things, no parent's gonna say that. There are a lot of issues with this. My main issue is that you're not letting the person whose body it is decide what happens to their body. Scar tissue doesn't grow. This means that as your body grows, your genitals grow, the rest of you grows, the scar tissue doesn't. And a lot of people who have surgery performed on them as infants have pain where that scar tissue is. A lot of the times, the parents and or the doctor choose wrong. They'll choose the genital makeup that is closest to what this child was born with, but that doesn't necessarily match up the way society says it should to the person's gender identity when they grow up. All of those things can be avoided if you don't perform surgery on a newborn. Now, I feel very strongly about this because we're talking about a person's bodily autonomy and power over their own selves. Almost never is a disorder of sex development a hindrance to the person's life. A lot of the time, a doctor will argue that the DSD can cause complications later in life or that it'll maybe a major issue because the child will be ostracized and it'd be better to just make them normal before it becomes a question. And it's true, kids get made fun of. But probably being able to decide what your body looks like and feels like and how it operates and all of those things is more important than if some kids pick on you because more likely than not, not a lot of kids are going to be looking at your genitals. Some disorders of sex development might show up later in life, as in puberty or a lot of other disorders of sex development go unnoticed entirely, but a lot of the population is intersex. Enough of the population that all of us should know about it. This is just a very basic overview of what intersex means and what disorders of sex development are. If you want more information, there are links down in the box below. And if you have questions or you want to discuss this some more, feel free to leave a comment. Don't forget to go ahead and like this video if you liked it, and subscribe to see what's up next. Also, we finally got our Tumblr and Twitter accounts set up and ready, so the links for those are also in the box below, as well as some links to my personal accounts and Kat's personal accounts, so go ahead and give those a look as well. Please share and subscribe and I'll see you next week.